Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Fuck off, asshole! Leave me alone! Don't you know it's fucking Sunday? I'm just so thrilled. I don't know what else to say. Um, we've got a new piece of gear to uh, to play with, and a new toy, new 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 gear, new gear day. And um, you know, it's it's really it's really awesome. It's really cool to get into um, you know uh, like beat making into like sort of live uh, performance and live. Uh, MIDI uh, clip, you know, adjustment and change and manipulation and things of that nature. There's things that go into performance and uh, making uh, making songs and and um, you know song progressions, uh, co- composition. Interesting, you know, from one moment to the next, and it's a, it's a really useful tool in that regard. There's two you know top shelf tools that you can uh, that you can choose from today. Uh, one of those is Ableton Live. The other is Native Instruments Machine. Oh. Or if you're in uh, the UK, it's pronounced Machina, uh, as you might hear on some of the YouTube videos from the um, from the folks out in Europe. And uh, what else can I say other than this thing is an absolute beast. And what I've done is I've composed uh, a beat... Uh, using um, a kit, just, you know, one of their standard uh, kits from their library. And then also uh, what I've done is um, I've used a, uh, a massive uh, synth to create the uh, sub or the bass, you know, synth sound. And then for the higher part of the melody, I've used uh, an FM, an old FM8 uh, patch for like a soft piano. Uh, but what's really awesome about uh, Machine is it brings all this together in a in a very simple way that you know uh, allows me to find these sounds, these instruments really really quickly without having to fool around with um you know different plugins and pulling up different things you know it's it's all kind of built into the the browsing functionality of the app of the application of machine so it's really powerful stuff and we'll get into the kind of the basics of machine but for today's episode what we're going to do is we're going to go over the basics while this sits here in loops, we're going to go over the basics of setting up multiple outputs for a uh, machine in Pro Tools because I don't know about you, but I don't want to do this shit 16 fucking times. There's no way. Um, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, you guys don't have that kind of time either. So we're going to learn about a really useful way to just set up all the different outputs that we're going to need inside of Pro Tools, and because I'm recording, I can't really change this or set this up, but what I've done for all of you is I have recorded a little video that I'm just going to pull up right here, uh, a video within a video, and um, I'll just narrate it for you right here, and we'll just watch it, and uh, you can see... Uh, literally, um, you know, how I go about, uh, how I, how I go, how I'm going to go about, uh, turning on the different, uh, outputs for machine and routing all those to the inputs within Pro Tools, which is what I'm, which is what I'm recording with today. Um, so let me go ahead and full screen this and we'll hit play.
And essentially, let me back this up. What I'm doing is I have machine open. I'll narrate this or watching it. And we have machine open. I close it. And then, you know, okay, so we have Pro Tools here. We have all my different inputs here, just what I started with. So just machine 1 through 16. And what you're going to do is you're going to select all your inputs. Just hold Shift and select. And then you're going to hit very important keystroke. So let me back that up. You're going to hit Command Alt. Okay. And I really wish this stupid play thing would go and come out of the way. Um, but you're going to hit Command. <clears throat> you're going to hit Command Alt on your keyboard. Okay. Hold that down. And then you're going to click on the second input, not the first one, but the second one. Select Plugin. And I did that really fast. Select Plugin and External 2. So you're on the second input. You're going to go Inputs, Plugin, Machine, External 2. And then that's going to set 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen. It's going to do all that for you. So even in Pro Tools, it's going to save you a lot. I slowed all this down for you to explain it, but this takes seconds to do this, and that's why I wanted to explain this because this is a huge time saver. If you're in a crunch and you need to record this in a way that's going to be easy to work with and mix down at a later time and deal with, um, you want to be able to capture it in a way that's not just a two-track. You know what I mean? Uh, dump of all the uh, sounds from machine. So set all your uh, your inputs to the external output of machine. Select the plugin again. Select the plugin. Hold Command Alt. Select the plugin as the input. You know so. No input there. Plug in machine external to. And while you're holding down Command Alt, it sets. 2 through 16. And then we're going to come back to machine 1 and because my output for the original channel, this is my instrument channel within Pro Tools. This is running the machine app as a plugin. And this is being output right now to just 3 and 4. That's what I normally do to record the episodes, just output to bus 3 and 4. It's saved in my template for Pro Tools. And so I'm just going to set that as the input here for the first channel. So machine one will just capture what's on the master channel. I'll just leave that the way it is. It's easy. Just leave the kick there, basically. That'll always be the kick. And then two through 16, that'll just record whatever I can set. That's, a, that's the max number we can set for right now. Maybe that'll change later. Uh, but it's a simple, <clears throat> you know, it took longer to explain than it did to record the video. But it's a simple, you know, just one minute video that explains um, how to set the outputs. And now all of my outputs within Pro Tools are set accordingly. So if I come and look at all my, uh, or sorry, not my outputs, my inputs are all set accordingly. So external two through 16. And what I have is I'll use the first, typically the first eight pads on Machine Micro. Uh, that um, have uh, sound on them and then, um, you know, like drum sounds. And then I'll use the other, you know, pos up to 16. I'll probably not even need this many ever per session. But then what I've done is I've saved this Pro Tools session as a template. Okay? And that is just another time saving thing. You got to do this stuff. File, save as template. And when you do that, you can just pull this up and you're ready to record. So if you've opened machine and you've been working on something, you've been creative, you had a night, whatever, you did a beat and you want to record it. You want to easily open up Pro Tools and have all your inputs already laid out, all that stuff. So get all this stuff set up. You don't want to have to do all this again. It's a pain in the ass, you know, naming all these tracks, doing all this stuff, getting it set up for like a pre-recording session. You know what I mean? Like now we're in the big time, you know, with this stuff. It's like 16 damn tracks. 
and we're recording it at once. And now what I'm gonna do is set all the outputs for all the individual sounds. So this is where it really gets gangster. So I'm gonna go, uh, you know, normally we have like the plug-in showing. And I'm gonna, like I said, leave the kick the way it is, but I'm gonna select this, um, this master setting or this uh, little knob option here. And this allows me to get to all the input and output settings. So again, I'm gonna leave the kick the way it is. So that's just set to the group. Make sure you're selecting the sound option, not the group option. You don't wanna be messing with the entire group uh, because for the drums, you wanna get to all the individual sounds. You wanna get to the individual uh, pads themselves. So in this case, I wanna start with the snare number two and start routing number two. So I'm gonna select number two, make sure I'm on sound, not group. And I'm gonna select my destination. Instead of the group, I'm gonna send it to external two because that's where my snare is going. And now we see levels lighten up for snare. All right, cool. So we'll come back and look at the mixer in a minute, but we can at least verify that we got levels. Now we've only got a few sounds for this kit overall, but we're gonna go ahead and set them so that uh, we can um, <clears throat> make sure that we're recording everything. I'm gonna just use the eighth one for this guy here. I'm not even gonna set number eight. So um, starting with two, I'm gonna set it to external two. I've already done that. I'm gonna come down to three, set it to external three. And that's already way too loud, so I'm gonna turn that down by about 10, that's better. Four, we'll go ahead and set four, I don't think it's recording anything. And then five, five, we got some stuff. Six, seven, eight, we don't really have anything, we'll just set, you know, this is just getting the habit. Um, but this is how you set all your outputs. Or, sorry, outputs for machine to the inputs for Pro Tools, to be specific there. So, no, that's not going to the master. We want to go to, um, since we got our clap here, got our little sound that we added in. This is the last minute sound we added in. But we'll send this to eight. All right. All right. We got everything. All the drums are now separated. So I'll let this be the marker. We're about 12 minutes in so far. And now we fully got drums. Oh, got some toms here. We've got everything grouped uh, so that we're... Looks like we're running kind of hot too. It's probably just, you know, on this channel here. We're running kind of hot still. This is still technically the drums, so we need to send the synths out. So, uh, the synths are going to go on 9 and 10. I've only got two sounds for those, but, you know, uh, depending on how many other sounds, you might have other sounds, other samples mixed into the drums that are more melodic, you know, more music related. So you might group those more with music instead of drums. It's however you want to set this kind of stuff up. This is, that's all personal preference. This is how I tend to do it. So drums for me are colored blue and grouped and then music or uh, synths are colored purple and grouped in that case I'll do guitars green and whatnot so that might be your vocals uh, you know uh, yellow or whatever so it just depends on how you want to do it but um, I'm gonna send now the output for the sound the group it doesn't it doesn't matter but just to be consistent here for the individual sound of this bass sound um, I'm gonna send this out to number nine and now we, we see that coming across nice and loud so we actually probably need to uh, come down on that that volume a touch that's probably what was running so hot And this, you know, you can get you can get it kind of dialed in. You can use the mixer of machine to make sure you're getting it dialed in, or you know, get to the actual instrument itself. 
Um, so let's go to group C and we're gonna set the output for this. This is gonna be 10. And that's definitely coming across nice and loud. And in the mix, it's gonna be closer to about that. But now, got everything separated. And I can't really delete these tracks, can I? No, I can't really delete while I'm recording. Can I not record while I'm recording? Let's see. Nope. So, um, that's fine. So we'll just uh, mess with that when, um, you know, later on, essentially. But uh, what we can do now is we can at least know that we're recording all of the different sounds completely separated and however we now want to kind of use this from a performance perspective we know that we'll capture it all so uh, if I switch back to my arrange view if I wanted to say mess with uh, which loops are playing when you could start doing that
until next time.